Hi, I'm Phil Douglas from the Utah Division of Wildlife Resources. I'm up here on the Temple Fork of the Logan River. I'm here with a group of biologists from the Division of Wildlife Resources, Forest Service, Utah State University, and Cache Anglers. We're taking fish from Temple Fork, collecting eggs and milk from the males, fertilizing the eggs right here on the stream side, and putting them in boxes developed by cash anglers. I think we have a lot of eggs, guys. Ooh, that's a big scoop. That's probably Too many? be plenty. No. Nope. Let's try it. And you want them right in here? Yep. Right in that upper part. Yep. This is more than our last time. Veteran fisheries biologist Paul Thompson from the Utah Division of Wildlife Resources and Dr. Paul Holden from the local chapter of Trout Unlimited talk about the need for and solutions for conservation of cutthroat trout. Well, the Bonneville cutthroat trout is the state fish. Um, and it's a fish that the state of Utah has been working on for probably about 35, 40 years. Back in the 1970s, around 1975, we thought they might even be extinct in the state. But since then, the state, the Division of Wildlife, the partners like Trout Unlimited, Fish and Wildlife Service, United States Forest Service has put a big effort into working on this species. We've discovered a lot of populations and we've actually created new populations back in their historic range and currently they occupy, we're estimating about 35 to 40 percent of their historic range. Now since they still don't occupy, you know, over 50 percent, they have been petitioned to be listed federally as a threatened species, but the efforts of these partners the work that we've done has kept them from being federally listed to date. The Logan River is one of the most important populations we have. It's what we call a meta population. Um, it's about 30 to 50 miles of stream that are interconnected with tributaries and the fish run up the tributary spawn and then they can move freely within the drainage. One issue we've had in the Logan River recently is brown trout and they seem to be expanding within the drainage. One of the lower tributaries is the right hand fork and it has a really high density of brown trout, probably the highest maybe even seen in the world according to Utah State University. So they've, Utah State University has gone in and done some mechanical removal of brown trout and the hope is if we can get brown trout out of that tributary it won't feed brown trout into the main stem Logan and we can maybe suppress their numbers within the rest of the drainage. But mechanical removal by electrofishing isn't efficient to get 100% of the fish. So the state of Utah is proposing to chemically treat the right hand fork with rotenone and then establish cutthroat trout. And if we can get a good population of cutthroat trout in the right hand fork, we may be feeding cutthroat into the main stem to offset brown trout and actually turn the tables a little bit in the lower Logan River drainage in favor of cutthroat. One of the issues we've had though, if we go ahead and do this chemical treatment is where do we get fish back into the stream from. We want to definitely get them from the Logan River and we've chosen Temple Fork, the next drainage upstream. We've tested these fish, they're genetically pure. Um, and then the only other thing is to be able to collect fish and move them into the right hand fork. Because this drainage has whirling disease, we can't move live fish. So we're resorted to going out and trying to collect the fish while they're spawning and take the eggs over into the right hand fork. The cash anglers were sort of given the task of coming up with how to do this in the right hand fork and most of us knew relatively little about the upper part of the right hand fork. Paul was talking about the lower part where brown trout are but the upper was sort of unknown. It's a much smaller stream and the two portions are separated by a big canyon with a huge drop in it and so three years ago we started working uh, putting the incubation boxes in, we got eggs, but we were unable to get back into that stream. There's two high ridges to cross over, and in bad weather, you can't get over them. So we took the uh, eggs to a, a division hatchery here in Logan, and they hatched out in about just a, just right a few days after they hatched. We brought them up and stocked them in the right hand fork. And it gave us a chance to see if that little stream uh, actually could handle these fish and they've done remarkably well. Well, one of the things that this partnership came up with is we could probably use incubation boxes, which are used around the country in various places for doing this kind of thing, for taking eggs, putting them in a stream, hatching them out in the stream, and then having, hopefully getting a population going there. So we want to keep them out of the sunlight. Right. But that's the concept, it's just a flow through system 
And what we'll have to do every few days is clean these up and make sure that we don't get silted. Whatever it is, if we get involvement and have buy-in, it has more people supporting us. And in today's world, that's pretty important. Just a beautiful fish for this size stream. They can get pretty big. This is probably about 14 inches or so, but they can get up to 15, 16 inches even in small streams. Great sport fish, love to take flies and lures. Well, this is a project that anglers can truly be excited about because it helps preserve our state fish, creates angling opportunities, and another great example of people working together to save places for our fish and wildlife.